Hey what's up creative people, so I'm back again with another video and for this video it's a little bit different from what I would usually do for a Friday video. Um, instead of a fall illustration this is actually a material study and usually I would have this as a Tuesday video but because it took so long and I think it's actually pretty important to talk about I thought it'd be interesting to have it as a Friday video instead. Um, yeah so I just didn't have time to squeeze in a full illustration for Friday but I think this is pretty important. Um, but yeah, the reason why I'm doing studies is because this week, and I think last week as well, I, I've been having a lot of art block issues and just trying to like figure out what the heck I'm going to draw but not having any kind of ideas, just really blank in the head. Um, and even when I would just kind of doodle my way out of art block, nothing was coming out, right? Like, even just a simple anatomy pose was just not coming out right for me. Um, so it was pretty frustrating, so I sat there, I was like, well, I guess I should do some studies since I haven't done them in a long time, and I'm probably, like, lacking in a lot of areas when it comes to any kind of materials or anything like that. Um, so I decided to sit down and kind of discipline myself and do the studies that I haven't done for so long. Like, I've done them in school, but it's been a long time since I've actually done them for myself, and it was actually pretty fun. Like. Just kind of sitting there and focusing on one thing instead of focusing like for example um with hair or anything like that like if you're focusing on a human body you're not really like painting the entire human body you're like quickly painting through everything and then not really focusing on the key details of something so stuff like that was really helpful with this and um that being said there was a lot of difficult points of it obviously since again it is a study and you're supposed to struggle and frustration is learning remember that <laughs> um but it was still like really fun so here i'm actually doing the hair now but um yeah just getting all the details and stuff that sometimes you wouldn't actually see normally if you were just painting an entire picture and you're not like zoned in on the details and everything um and just it actually helps a lot when you're doing colors and stuff because again this is also a lighting study in a sense too because you want to see how the material kind of reacts to the light whether it's matte service gloss service or like metallic or something like that um, so it's interesting to kind of see how different materials react to light and it just kind of ho helps you focus in on that kind of thing um, and here's one of the difficult ones I ran into which was the crystal one and uh, it was, it was just really difficult getting the shape right and just getting the right kind of tones and everything. And uh, I'm probably going to go back and do a lot of these over. Um, there's like a select few. I'm like, yep, that one needs to be redone. <laughs> Speaking of which is leather, which is this one. Um, usually for leather, I would use a little bit of brushwork and then a lot of photo texture to kind of get the right details and just go over it again to kind of enhance the details. But um, for this one, I was kind of straying away from that since again, it is a material study. So I learned that I'm really bad at painting leather, which I have to go back in and do. <laughs> um, and then for this one, I was going for more of a flesh kind of material, but instead of skin, I guess, I was going more for uh, the kind of gum, gummy tongue kind of texture that has a lot of shininess to it. Um, but I ended up changing it back to like a normal kind of skin thing. Um, but I still have that one like on a layer somewhere because <laughs> it was fun still. But I ended up changing that in the end. Um, but yeah, it was just really fun to just kind of do ran not real, not really random, but just kind of enhance my brain a little bit on different materials and stuff because sometimes I'll shy away from things that I don't really know how to do like scales I don't really do that often um, feathers I do do often but this was actually really fun because I never really focused in on the key details of feathers and I never really focused on like how they lay on top of each other I just kind of like drew them because I'm like okay they kind of go in that direction all right let's see what happens um, but for this study it was really interesting to find out how feathers kind of react in terms of the motion of like the muscle and everything um, and for this particular feather example, I guess, I used a raven because I knew in my head that ravens have some really interesting color tones to their feathers when in light or so on and so forth. So I thought that would be a really interesting thing to study off of. Um, and it was just really fun to play with the different color tones of their wings. It was super fun. Um, and for fire, 
This is another one of my difficult ones because I, I tend to keep my fire very, I guess, cartoonish in a way. And uh, I don't really stray too far from like like plain, um, what is it, simplistic kind of style. Um, so it was really difficult to get this really realistic fire look again without photo, photo material. And um, yeah, so I ended up struggling a lot with that one and just kind of trying not to make it too cartoonish but keep it in the same tone, I guess. But yeah, that one was hard. I mean, I like the end result, but I still feel like it's not up to par as to what it should be, so I definitely want to go back and redo fire. And then for the bubble, um, I thought, it, originally I wasn't going to put bubble in there because I don't really draw bubbles, but I thought bubbles would be an interesting kind of texture to play with. And I learned it was actually really hard because especially when it's on a gray surface, when you put colors on it, it doesn't really look right because bubbles kind of react to their environment in terms of color. Um, but usually they still have this blue, green, and uh, violet kind of color. Um, so I tried to keep that in there, but it looks really weird on the gray background in my opinion. So that was definitely hard. And just like the transparency of it all and everything. Oh, and then I went back and changed the other one to a more of a skin. Um, yeah, this really helps you kind of get your colors in and just kind of works your brain a little bit and um so now i'm working on a wax candle and that was another hard one because again it's it's not really a shiny surface and it's not too matte it's like an in between um so getting that kind of tone and it's also two different light sources so you have the flame of the candle and then the actual light source that you're using as you know the whole study and purposes but um so working with the wax and mainly the dripping texture was super hard to nail because i wanted it to reflect the light that the light source was getting but at the same time since the light kind of shining through the candle i had to remember that the drips were making another layer of the wax so it would actually make a shadow at the same time so that was kind of difficult to kind of figure out like the moment I kind of like realized it in my head I was like oh geez I'm an idiot <laughs> but it took a while to get the right shape and everything too but yeah that's pretty much it for this video I guess um there's a lot of things I want to go back and finish since I feel like some of them aren't finished since I was up really late doing them too but yeah I hope you guys found some little mini insights doing this and I hope you guys do your own studies um maybe like do like a little studies challenge or something but yeah, so I hope you guys like this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.